Welcome back to another very exciting tutorial here at the PhotoshopTrainingChannel.com. My name is Jesus Ramirez, and you can find me on Twitter at JRFromPTC. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create comic action lines and halftone patterns in Photoshop. For this tutorial, we're going to use a free script called Comic Kit. This add on was created by Daichi Ito, who works for Adobe as a user experience designer. He also created the Flame Generator and the Tree Generator which are now built into Photoshop. I've done tutorials for both plugins, which you probably have seen. If not, look at the description below for the links to those tutorials. If you want to keep up with Daichi and his work, you can follow him on his Behance page, behance.net slash Daich, that is D-A-I-C-H. So the first thing that you need to do for this tutorial is install the Comic Kit add-on, which allows you to create highly customizable screen patterns zoom lines, and speed lines. You can download Comic Kit at this URL, or you can simply click on the link in the description of this video. You will need an Adobe ID to install this add-on. After you log in, you will need to click on the free button that will appear in this area. I've already installed the add-on, so my button instead reads, view my add-ons. As a side note, you may also want to download the cloth texture generator, which allows you to add realistic cloth textures to your designs and illustrations. I don't think Daichi coded this add-on, but it was created by someone else at Adobe. In any case, it's a great add-on and one that you should definitely try. Once you've installed Comic Kit, you should be able to follow along with this tutorial. We're going to use this quick drawing that I created specifically for this video, and we're going to get to add some dramatic zoom lines using Comic Kit. You can download this image from my website if you want to follow along. Okay, let's get started with the tutorial. Now, before we continue, make sure that you have the script installed in your version of Photoshop. That way you can follow along. So I'm working with two files. I have a background layer, which is just a white background and this character layer here. And I'm going to add one more blank layer and I'm going to put that blank layer in between the character and the background. And I'm just going to call this layer action lines. Then I'm going to click on the pen tool and I'm going to create a path it's going to help the script create the action lines. So the first point that I'm going to create will determine the center of the action lines and the second point will determine the end. So I'm going to click here to set the first point, which is the center, and then here to create the second point, which is the end. Now make sure that the path is selected. In my case, it is. And in case you don't have your path selected, just click on the path selection tool and click on the path and now it's selected then go into edit fill or you can also press shift backspace which is what i will do next time i come into the fill window and under contents select pattern and then check script and choose speed lines from the drop down and press ok photoshop is going to bring up the speed lines window and you're going to have a whole bunch of options but first Make sure that you select default so you and I are looking at the same thing. Then I'm simply going to press OK. We're going to talk about these options in a moment. So then Photoshop automatically creates those speed lines. Now you can see how they work. The first point that we set created the center of the speed lines and the last point created the end. The lines are very thin towards the center and very thick in the outside. And you can also see that we set the point here and you can sort of imagine this point revolving around the center point, which is why we don't have any lines out in the outside. So I'm simply going to undo the last step. So I'm going to go to edit, step backward. And next time I'll just press control alt Z command option Z in the Mac to do multiple undos. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to extend this line so that the speed lines cover the entire canvas next time I run the script. So I'm going to select the direct selection tool, select that point, click and drag it out. Then I'm going to press shift backspace to bring up the fill window and make sure that I have speed line selected under script and press OK. Now, if I press OK one more time, you'll see that this time Photoshop will cover the entire canvas with the speed lines here at the bottom. And actually it looks like I need to expand that point even further, which I will do. So I'm going to zoom out, press a on the keyboard to select the direct selection tool. 
And I'm actually going to undo the action lines. So I'm going to press Control Alt Z, Command Option Z on the Mac. Then I'm going to click and drag this point out even further. I'm going to press Shift Backspace. And now we're going to talk about the options in the Speed Lines window. So the first thing you need to worry about is the line type. Right now we're looking at zoom. It creates this zooming effect. We can also create a speed effect, which is going to create this effect here. We're going to talk about this more in a moment, but for now we're going to focus on zoom. You also have different line widths. And I'm just going to select just a few here just so you can see how they work. This one is the reverse line width. So in this particular case, the thicker part of the line is in the inside and the thinner part is in the outside. You also have waves, which create these waves emitting from the center. And then you have even, which creates even lines. So the thickness is the same both in the end and in the beginning. Now I didn't go through all of them, but you can feel free to select the different ones and you'll see how they work. They're very self-explanatory. Now, the reason I chose even is so that we can see how these options work. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to decrease the line width. And this will do exactly what you would expect. It decreases the width of the lines that are created in the speed line effect. And I will actually reduce it even more just to 0.1, just so we can barely see the lines. The next option is the randomness of the width. So you'll notice that some lines are thicker than others. That's because we have the randomness set here. So I can just bring that back down to zero and all the lines will be the same width. And actually, let me increase the width a little bit so we can actually see the lines. The lines are way too thin if you leave it at 0.1. Okay, that's a good number, four. Then we have spacing. Spacing is the spacing between each line. So right now it's set to one, but I can increase that, and you'll see now that we'll have fewer lines. Also, this is a randomness of the spacing. So if we bump this up, some lines will be really close together, and other lines will be really far apart. So I'm just going to bring this back down to zero and we have the center space. The center space is how much space we have in the center circle. So obviously a low center space will give us no space here on the end and a high center space will create a white image. So if you bring the center space down, you'll start to see some of the lines come back. So I'm just going to put that right about here. Then we have the randomness of the center space. Notice that some of these lines go into the center more than others. If you set this to zero, we'll have a perfect circle. So I hope that this gives you a good idea of what each of these sliders do. Now, the advanced tab has more options. You can set the color of the line, for example, red. Now, I probably wouldn't change the color here because when you create these lines in a transparent layer, the color that you're using will be solid and then you'll have transparent pixels. So it's very easy to give color to later. So for now, I'll just leave this at black. And one of the other options here is the transparency. So if I bump this up, you'll notice that these lines will all have different levels of transparency, which is why some of these lines have different shades of gray. And you have a vibration randomness. This sort of helps you create maybe like a pencil sketch effect. So I'm going to go back into the basic tab. Now we're going to talk about the custom presets. So I'm going to just show you a few of the custom presets. This is a speed line preset and there's several. This one's called speed line wind. And we also have some presets for zoom lines. So here's a zoom line even one. Zoom line explode, which is one that I like. This is a very classic comic book effect. And zoom line radiation. And the one we're going to use for this tutorial, zoom line standard bold number two. And I'm just going to press OK. Now the effect is pretty good, but I have one problem. I'm not really getting any zoom lines here on top and I would like to have some. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo this, click on this point using the direct selection tool, drag that towards the center of his body, maybe this point here and run that effect again, shift backspace. And this time I'm going to make a few changes. I'm going to increase the width of the lines, maybe a little bit more. And I'm also going to decrease the center space just a little bit and increase the center space randomness. And I'll press OK. 
And that looks pretty good. So now I have my character. I have the action lines. Notice that it's in a layer with transparency. So that means that I can double click on it and I can apply a color overlay, for example. So maybe I can select red as the color or any other color that I like. I can also apply a gradient, for example. So maybe just select something that's a little more noticeable. So maybe something like this. You can really see the gradient there. In this case, I'm just going to not add a color to it or anything like that. I'm just going to cancel this. And this is the final effect. I want to create a new layer. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete this path. So I'm going to select it, click on the delete key and delete it. And I'm going to create another path. And this time the path is going to go across the entire image like so. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to create some speed lines. I'm going to hold shift backspace and bring up the fill window, press OK. And I'm just going to go into presets and select speed lines, even number one. And I can press OK. And now my character has some speed lines. So you can sort of see that he's moving a little bit. And I can take advantage of Photoshop features, for example, a layer mask. And I can come in here and use the lasso tool. And I sort of bit into this line here. So let me hold Alt Option on the Mac and deselect that. And I can fill that with black. Control Backspace, Command Backspace on the Mac to fill with black on the layer mask. So it hides those lines there. Then I can select these lines here. Fill with black again. Control Backspace, Command Backspace on the Mac. And I can come in and hide these lines here and you sort of get the idea of what I'm doing. I'm hiding the lines that I don't need in order to get this effect. Now for the rest of the lines, I'm just going to make a selection with the marquee tool and fill with black, fill with black here and fill with black there. Now we have some speed lines that help sell the effect that my character is moving through space on over to the right. At this point, if you want, you can come in and delete, delete that path. But this is not the effect that I wanted to go for in this image. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete this layer and enable the actions line, which is what I really wanted. Now that I'm looking at it, I see this thick line here. If you get something like this that you're unhappy with, just use something like the polygonal lasso tool and just in something that looks like a triangle like so and fill that with black. This time black is my foreground color so I'm going to hold alt backspace option backspace on the Mac control D command D to deselect. I'm going to create a new layer and now I'm going to talk about the halftone patterns that you can create. So I'm going to go into edit fill and this time I'm going to select green pattern and then press OK. And this is going to bring up the screen pattern window this one here and under presets, I'm going to go into default. That way we're all looking at the same thing. And as you can see, you can create a halftone pattern. So this is the pattern scale. So notice as I drag this over, the scale is going to shift. Now this slider controls the left side. So notice how if I bring this up here, this is dark. The pattern scale two controls the right side. So look at the difference. See that change there. So you can make adjustments to your patterns here. This one is how many dots you see. So for example, if I drag this all the way to the left, you'll only see one. And the further I drag it to the right, you'll start seeing more. And you can just keep making adjustments to these sliders to see how they work. Now, the one thing on the advanced tab that I will talk about is the pattern type. For example, you have circle, you have squares, which are more like diamonds, really, stars, leaves, hearts and I'm not going to go through all of them but you get the idea so I'm just going to set mine to circle and I'm going to go back to the basic tab and talk about the different custom presets and again I'm just going to click on a few so that's one that's another one there another one there and as you can see there's a whole bunch of different ones that you can use for a lot of different things in this case I'm just going to stick with the default pattern and I'm just going to press okay 
and Photoshop goes in and fills in that halftone pattern. Again, the only pixels that are opaque are the black ones. There's no real white. The white is the background. You can double click on this layer and just as with the other layer, you can click on color overlay and set it to red or whatever other color you want to color your halftones. And that's it for this tutorial. I hope that you enjoyed it and that you learned something new. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down below. If you enjoy the tutorial, don't forget to click that like button and share this video with a friend. If you haven't already, subscribe to the Photoshop training channel now. Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you again soon.